Hello there and welcome to day 25 of our Lexical Lab Summer School 2019 series of little video diaries. Only five more days to go after this one until 2020. Um, what I wanted to really talk about today was something that's been on my mind quite a lot during this week of working with uh, particularly my wonderful high-level group on the English Boost Language Development course that we run for the last two weeks of our summer school. One of the really interesting things for me on this course has been the fact that certain students who speak really good levels of English already and who have perfectly intelligible, um, in no way particularly strong accents, and in one case not even really identifiable as belonging to any particular geographical location or first language kind of background. The students with all of these is kind of what you could call plus signs in their favour still worry massively about their accents um, to the point that they contemplate doing courses that uh, promise to eradicate foreign accents and develop whatever a British accent is supposed to mean. Um, I suspect that means something like received pronunciation. And I think this is really strange on several levels. Um, one is because I think pronunciation is something that's very, very, very hard to change for a lot of people. Um, we're all primed by our first language experience and by the sounds that it's normal for us to make in our first language. And obviously this has an impact on the way we say things in our second language. We're all also, whether we like it or not, whether we're comfortable with it or not, the products of our own environments and the products of our own life experiences. I think a lot of non-native speakers don't realise that among native speakers there are also accent anxieties and, you know, sort of inferiority complexes, often as a result of other people's superiority complexes. Um, when I first started out myself, uh, I had comments made about my pronunciation by, I'm presuming, upper-class people who have received pronunciation, uh, who took offence at the fact that someone, I quote, with my diction could be given plenaries at English language teaching conferences, which at the time quite upset me and quite, quite affected me um, to the point where I thought about consciously trying to change my accent in order to sound more neutral uh, as I saw it, more middle class, more received pronunciation. Uh, as the years have gone by, I think, uh, I feel much less inclined to do this and I feel much more uh, confident of the fact that I don't have to prove things to people. Uh, if people listen to me and the first thing they hear is my accent as opposed to my ideas or, you know, what I'd like to think of as my intelligence um, or, or my personality or just, just my words. If someone's listening to me and judging my accent before they're judging my words, that's their problem. And I think this is the same when people are listening to other non-native speakers, whether where it's a native listening to a non-native or whether it's another non-native listening to a non-native. If what you're doing first and foremost is understanding the words that that person is saying to you, um, but not responding to that particular message, but responding to the accent within which that's wrapped up when it's intelligible, that makes you a, a bit of an idiot, I think, personally. Uh, it, it's not something to be encouraged. And the idea that somehow accent can be eradicated, that somehow you'd be a better person or, or better at your job or, or, or happier within yourself uh, if you were able to pass yourself off in some way as, you know, somebody who grew up in the upper echelons of English society speaking received pronunciation, I find very peculiar. And... It depresses me in a way because it's a sign that, that even though English is now used as a global lingua franca, there's still a long way to go before we have acceptance of accent diversity. 
Um, if you're watching this thinking that, you know, you, you were one of those people that might like to go and try and improve your accent, whatever improve means in this context, uh, I'd recommend that you save the money that you might have spent on that and um, boost your self-esteem in some other way. Join a gym or, or, you know, take yourself and your partner out for a lovely meal or, or um, you know, buy yourself a brand new set of clothes that make you look good. Um, all of these things will be better for you in the greater scheme of things than being made to feel inferior because you can't say the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain.